Hi, I'm Guy Cohen from TradeTheBanks.com. On April the 26th, just a few weeks ago, I sent a note out to my private subscribers warning them of increasing volatility that was about to happen in the markets. As you're about to see, April the 26th turned out to be the 18-month high of the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ. The very next day, the markets fell steeply, and the very next week, we saw unprecedented volatility in the markets and more than a 10% fall in the markets over the following few weeks. As you can imagine, my students were intrigued, to say the least, and pretty impressed. A number of them actually followed my words to the letter, acted on my advice, and took immediate advantage, which is great for them. Now, these students have got to know me pretty well by now, so they're getting used to me calling the markets, and now they're doing a pretty good job of it themselves. The question you may be asking right now is probably something like, OK, how on earth did I know this was going to happen? Well, of course I didn't know for sure, but I had a very good feeling about it and was therefore able to take the necessary action immediately and alert my students with confidence at the same time. Now, if you knew what I knew, if you could see what I can see, think about the impact that would have on your life and your investments. You could find winning positions. You could make fantastic profits, and you could avoid the kind of catastrophic losses that average investors have suffered in volatile market conditions. Now, I'll come on to all of that in a few moments and explain everything. But first, let me introduce myself briefly. I'm Guy Cohen. I'm a trader and a best-selling author of three financial trading books, including Options Made Easy, The Bible of Options Strategies, and Volatile Markets Made Easy. My clients include New York Stock Exchange, Euronex, that's the biggest stock exchange in the world, and the Financial Times. In a moment, you're going to see exactly how I was able to anticipate what the markets were about to do next. Now, of course, we can't always do that. Not even Warren Buffett can do that. But we can do it a good amount of the time, which means we can do three things. First, we can make money, and that can be big money. Second, we can protect ourselves from those nasty, catastrophic losses that the average trader tends to make. Third, we can develop an uncanny intuition and be completely in tune with the markets. Now, wouldn't you just love to have that gift? We all want to make money in the markets. That's obvious, and I'm going to show you how. But if there's one other thing that my students want, it's they also want to be in tune with the markets. They want to be able to anticipate the markets. They want that uncanny intuition so that they can buy and sell at the right time with confidence like me. Some people just seem to have the knack, so I'm going to show you right now how you can have it as well. You're now going to see a short recording that I made just a couple of days ago. I'm only going to have it online for a limited time and for very good reason, as you're about to see. So please watch it now while you can, and I'll see you back here right afterwards. Hello, everybody. I hope that you're having a nice evening. My presentation is going to start off with bad news, and then we're going to get on to some good news. So it's going to come in two parts, really. Um, the bad news starts with the global challenges for we investors and uh, traders. This is what we're all up against. The financial chaos that we've been experiencing means that everything that you own is pretty much at risk. That means your home, your job, your 401k, and other assets. Now, why is this? Well, it's because Western world governments are using debt to solve debt. They're trying to solve the debt crisis by pouring more debt on it. And sooner or later, they are going to have to get off that wheel, and that's what the markets are beginning to wake up to. So using debt to solve debt, in turn, devalues assets because it has to in order to devalue the debt as well. So we get rid of debt by devaluing it. And by that, we mean we have to inflate. We have to have inflation. And whether the official stats said or not, inflation is on the rise. Just look at the price of oil, for starters, and your gasoline. So things are getting more expensive. And in this artificially low interest rate environment, you have the double whammy now of asset depreciation and lower savings income. And what I think has happened here is that the Western governments have been offered either a scenario akin to the 1930s or the 1970s, and pretty much they've done a deal. And the deal that they've done, and I think sensibly and responsibly, is that they have opted for the 1970s, which means inflation is here even if you can't see it. 
And what that also means is that there's a lot of uncertainty around, and therefore there's volatility appearing in the markets again, which you'll recognize by the wild gyrations and swings that we've just been experiencing. And we were forecasting, or I was forecasting this on the 26th of April, the, w the week before the volatility started, and on the day the market hit a high, an 18-month high that day, and I suggested that volatility was literally imminent. And really what this means is that this global situation, this global uncertainty, inevitably leads to challenges in the wider markets. So we're going to talk about some of those challenges now. And one of the questions that I am often ask is that, uh, in recent times is how come we've just had a bull run, a substantial bull market during a prolonged recession, well, and, and a really serious prolonged uh, recession. And one of the market's functions here is to anticipate. So the market's just doing its job. But it's a bit strange, don't you think, that from March 09 to April 2010, the market retraced almost all of its losses that it made in the crash from September 2008 to March 2009. And it's only now that it's bouncing straight back down again. So how did it happen that the market retraced virtually all its losses from the crash so quickly in literally about a year's time? Well, billions of dollars have been funneled from the governments, Western governments, to banks and to financial institutions. And But meanwhile, consumers cannot get lending even for sensibly organized projects and yet at the same time again already in 2010 the banks are now making record profits again and paying record bonuses so the question is this where did they make all this money well one answer is in the markets which by the way are lower now than they were as John says 10 years ago so and that's even without uh, adjusting for inflation so People who are long-term buy and holders from 10 years ago in the index funds have actually lost money in real terms. And yet, the big players are making money. Trust me on that. So if you are a long-term buy and hold kind of person, you're basically down before we even adjust for inflation. So knowing that the markets are something of a loaded game that only the few in the know can play, here's the first big lesson of the evening, and that is you must trade with a plan. If you don't trade with a plan, that is akin to gambling. Now that might seem obvious, but the vast majority of average investors do not trade with a proper plan, where they know in advance where you buy and how you manage the trade. So you have to trade with a strategy, but most systems out there encourage what's known as over-trading. They encourage you to make a trade every day regardless of the current or surrounding conditions. Now, to me, that's kind of like playing golf during an electrical lightning storm. You might get away with it some of the times, but you are dicing with death if you do that. Most systems as well are unnecessarily complex and that's whether it's uh, multi-dimensional matrices of numbers and all sorts of gobbledygook um, like stars and planets and God knows what but that is the, the end of the bad news because what we're about to talk about now is uh, the good news what you need is a proper plan and that plan must be simple and elegant and where you know exactly where you're buying and that you're buying and how to manage the trade now you're in it. So how do we do this now?